And Mira sets tongues wagging in Albert Square tonight at 8. But now Shanti's family woes look like they may be here to stay in Shortland Street. Required action, but I cannot condone your behaviour. We all have crises of faith from time to time. No, it's more than that. I'm done, Chris. I'm done with medicine. It smells wicked. And your timing is perfect. This foul weather makes me crave a bubbling cauldron of mum's home cooking. As long as you're not craving Eye of Newt. They were all out of the butchers. <laughs> I know what I'm craving, and that is a good hairdresser. Look at this frizz. It's a damp one that does that. I know, and I have scored myself an appointment at Burnham and Wood this afternoon. Who? A hideously expensive salon downtown. <laughs> Takes a few weeks to get in, and they had one cancellation. So Callum's given you some time off, is he? Actually, mm, mother, that smells divine. You've outdone yourself. Exactly what I was saying yesterday. Now, Yvonne, how do you feel about having your photo on the wall and triage as employee of the month? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Libby, could you organise a photographer for this afternoon, please? Car parks, dinner vouchers and pay rises, also extra staff. I think we might be looking at the best CEO this hospital has ever had. What do you think, Maya? No, I can't see anyone else doing a better job. Uh, has anyone seen Justine? She said she was on her way in. If you do, tell her I'm looking. Mm. Thank you. A photo? <laughs> I think I'm the one who needs to have her hair done. Well, you can book somewhere else tonight because there is no way I am cancelling my cut and colour. Callum's little photo shoot can wait until tomorrow. I'm sure he won't mind. He's obviously forgotten about your appointment. Well, he doesn't know. Got so much work on at the moment, there is no way he'd let me go. Just Skyping. Well, it's not like I do it often. But what if Callum finds out? Well, he won't. After our little chat yesterday, he trusts me completely. I think he might notice your empty desk. Well, oh, oh, I think I'm coming down with something. A nasty part. <laughs> Stop it. I don't want to know. <laughs> but what? Oh, the weather forecast. It's ghastly. Mother, you should put that in the fridge. How was the weather, man? Treacherous for driving. Shanti was a nervous wreck. Had a hand glued to my leg the whole way home. Hmm, torture. I only dropped her off half an hour ago and I miss her already. Oh, well, she'll be telling her family all about the honeymoon. Ooh, I hope not. <laughs> Ooh, like that, was it? It was a honeymoon kip. What do you think it was like? Hey, and um, thanks for putting up with Shovna. Yeah, oh, I've barely seen her. Work's been so busy between that and trying to get some shutter. Oh, so you haven't had any trouble with the party? It's all sorted, bro. She's given up wanting to marry you. That was never going to happen. <laughs> and the in-laws, they're still in the dark about. Yeah, even uh, little Grishma's kept her mouth shut. Good result. Yeah. I'll get it. Good morning, brother-in-law. Dipali, hi. Uh, your mother's gone out and Shanti's over at your uncle and auntie's place. I know. We said hello. I'm here to see Kit. Hey, uh, come on in. Movie doesn't start for a bit. Would you like a coffee or a tea? Uh, tea, please. Okay, take a seat. What's going on? I thought you said it was all off. I thought you said she's given up. Yeah, she, she will. Just after I take her on a proper date. One date. That's all she wants. I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone for their efforts during the current flu outbreak. It's far from over, but uh, you and your staff should be very proud of the way you're handling the situation. Yes, well done, folks. Hmm. Now, on to less pleasant items. Uh, I've reviewed all the submissions for funding, and Craig, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to refuse your request for a monitored bed. In favour of? A flexible transgastric peritoneoscope. Oh, how very nice for your department, Justine. Hmm. How many times has your monitored bed request been passed over? It's Callum's call. Indeed it is. Now, I'm a little pressed for time, so unless anyone has anything else... I think we're all good, thanks. <coughs> is it just me, or do we suddenly have two CEOs? It does seem like a Mackay double act, yes. Hmm. Hmm. Guess what I'm going to attempt tonight. 
vegetable coma. I'm sure you'll do a very good job. <laughs> I wouldn't count on it. I know where I am with meat, but without it, I always feel there's something missing from the brew. But still, never too old to learn, are you? I envy you, Yvonne. Why? You have everything. Complete freedom, your own home, an important job, and now you've just been made employee of the month. <laughs> That was a surprise. I think I must have charmed Dr. Mackay somehow. <laughs> Don't be modest. You've earned his recognition. I dream of a life in New Zealand. A life just like yours. Oh, don't get the wrong idea. It's not easy being alone. But it can be very exciting. What about the man you met on the cruise ship? <laughs> the fling I had with Sammy Diamond was fun, but I would have swapped all of that for just one more day with my husband. Your Ian was a better husband than mine, Naveen. They're all difficult. Ian and I had our fair share of arguments. I remember what... Naveen is having an affair. Oh. In his head, if not yet in her bed. He is besotted with his office manager, Gayatri. So he's not actually sleeping with her? <laughs> so he says. He admires her. He respects her. He spends all his time with her. Let us see how he gets on without me to come home to. Is that why you're thinking of staying in New Zealand? To punish him? No. I want to be independent. I want to work and earn my own money. I want to feel good about myself. The way you do. Uh, I did it at first. Entering the workforce is terrifying. Independence can be very lonely. But these are small sacrifices for rediscovering my pride. And I have you. You will help me get started, won't you? If you're very sure that that's what you want. It is. I need you to help me find someone to interview for my media studies assignment. Me? Why? Well, because I have to interview someone about a life-changing issue or event. So I figured Alice was the obvious choice, you know, with the whole Joey thing, but she's left town. Uh-huh. So I figured you could find me some lung cancer-ridden old smoker to talk to. I'd definitely get an A-star for a cautionary tale about the evils of tobacco. And I'm sure I could find you someone like that. Yes! I can just hear me now. Excuse me, so sorry about your hideous health issue, but can my daughter use you for her school assignment? Dream on. Morgan. Hi. Have you ever thought about advancing to level three? Yeah, it's something I've always meant to get onto, but life happens, I know. But you are a promising member of my team and I'd like to help. Perhaps I could assist you in putting together a teaching session and completing your exemplar, if you think you're up to it. Wow, I didn't think you'd even noticed me. Well, I have. But it's not just the practical stuff, eh? I'd need to complete my professional development hours. There's a long way to go. Well, we can fast track that. How? I do have some influence around here. I just need to know that you're interested. I am. I really am. Then leave everything to me. Looking for a new job? Yeah, maybe. Hey, thanks, Hunter. I did not like the lead actress. Blondes are very cold. Yeah. Um, look, to parley about us. Oh, please, I'm trying to forget what happened. You are? I got carried away that night. It, it shames me. But, and I'm really sorry if I'd known that you were... As long as you still like me a little. Of course. Hey, um, what do you do when you're back in India? I'm studying, but I want to be an actress. A Bollywood star. Cool. <laughs> oh, Bollywood is beyond me. I cannot dance well enough. Oh, bummer. I need to get an acting agent somewhere else, but I don't know how. Hey, this guy might be able to help. He's, a, he's an actor. No, no, I'm a barman. But you've had your face on the box, right? What was it? Acne or undies or something? Yeah, he does TV ads, that sort of thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, maybe you could introduce the parley here to your uh, agent. Um, I don't have one anymore, sorry. Although, I think I've got a new card in my bag. I'll go grab it for you. <sighs> hey, you got time for a coffee? No, I can't. Got to go see Tony. How is he? Oh, he's pretty good. We're working on the song together and he's in a much better space up here. Hey, do you think Tane would want to talk to me for a school project? What kind? We have to do a story on some life-changing event. Even a chat would be good. Yeah, I'll sign him out. Cool, thank you. And make sure you say hi from me. Sweet. I think that's a bad idea, Soph. Why? I mean, if I was Tane, I'd jump at the opportunity Except to... Except Tane can't jump at anything. Man, did I really say that? Chances are he won't want to relive the accident so soon. One day, that's all she wanted. Now she's happy to leave me behind. Good. <laughs> you thought I'd stuff it up, didn't you? Oh, ye of little faith. Hey, welcome home. You idiot! 
idiot. Hey, what now? I just spoke with Dipali. She raved about her wonderful date with you. It's okay, Shanti. She said that you encouraged her to stay in New Zealand, pursue her acting, find an agent, and get a job in a pub while she waits for work. I never mentioned a job in the pub, but you mentioned everything else. I'm all for Morgan doing her level threes, but I don't see how we can fast track her study hours. You can send her on courses, they come up all the time. We're short staffed, and what study days they can manage have to be shared around. Not necessarily. If I start favouring Morgan, she'll be pretty unpopular with the other nurses. So, you want her career to suffer because some nurses might get snitty? Look, if this is what she wants, why hasn't she told me herself? It's what I want, Maya. I'll pull rank if I have to. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. I think I look very stylish. But you don't look like you. That's a point, Shanti. I'm not me anymore. Who are you then? For a start, a person who's going to get a job. Doing what? I will find something. This country is full of opportunities. For young people with work permits, you'll need... She's not staying. Look, we've talked about this. Scotty never meant that you could live with us. He said that you could visit. I intend to stay at Rani's. And no, for a few days. you need to get on the plane tonight and sort things out with Bapu. I don't need your permission. Besides, I've discussed this with Yvonne. And with her on my side, Yvonne I Jeffries. can do it. What has she been saying? <sighs> that she will help me achieve independence, just like her. Good news. Maya's agreed to ramp up your study leave so you can get those professional development hours covered off quickly. Really? Yeah. But how? We're so busy. Oh, she can do magic when she wants to. My daughter, you're worth it. Thanks heaps, Justine. You're welcome. Thanks for what? Helping her to fast track her level three study hours. She's grateful enough. Hopefully she'll tell Chris where to go when he tries to poach her. Mm, good strategy. Not helped by Maya Jeffries. She was deliberately obstructive. Well, that's surprising. She assured me I had her full support. Oh, you're the king now, aren't you? You've won her respect. Thanks to your advice. It's a pity the same respect doesn't extend to me. Mm. Sophie, I was going to call you. Are you free for some more babysitting tomorrow night? I've got this huge assignment. Oh, is it a tough one? Well, we're supposed to choose a real-life cautionary tale, so I was thinking of asking Tane if I could interview him about the accident. Except I haven't seen him since he's been at the spinal unit. Well, then the assignment's a positive thing. Whatever happens, at least it's reopened the lines of communication. You don't think he'd be offended I asked him to talk about the accident? I think he'd be more offended if you went along and pretended nothing ever happened. Just be straight with him. Be yourself. You can do it. Oh, Maya, may I have a word, please? Just briefly, I expect my HODs to support the career advancement of their staff. You might want to bear that in mind in future. I'm sorry? What is this about? Morgan Braithwaite. You're joking. Did just think... No, you know how this place works. Just remember where you stand, please. Are you still interested in coming to work for me? I can't. You said you wouldn't poach anyone from Justine. Hmm. I changed my mind. There's an opening on my team for someone like you. Seriously? Except Justine's been really good to me recently. Yeah, I bet she has. Well, it's your decision, Morgan. Let me know by the end of the day. Flat white to go. Tell Justine, this is a bit awkward, but... Chris has offered me a place on his team and I was... I thought you wanted to do your level threes. I do, but this is... Chris really... isn't like me, you know. He doesn't put himself out to help his staff. But if you want to throw my efforts back in my face, then... I don't. I really appreciate everything you're doing. It's OK. I'll, I'll turn him down. You'll be glad in the end. Hey, you working on your blog. You know about that? When I was in Perth, I read every entry. <laughs> oh, I didn't realise that you based some stuff on me losing the plot. It was pretty compelling. In a good way. Reading your point of view and seeing all the other online comments helped me put things into perspective. 
I should be thanking you. Really? Because I felt like such a chicken the way I dealt with it. Well, there's nothing chicken about going over old stuff. The chicken thing would be to ignore it. And that wouldn't help anyone. Independence is all very well, but you need your family and friends. You have to come back to India. Don't distress, Krishma. We'll all be on that plane tonight. All of us. Except me. This is madness. You don't want to leave Bapu. You know you don't. I must, Betty. It is the only way. To do what? To restore my self-respect. To feel that I'm worth something. Oh, sure now. I want Gayatri's job. If I can't have it, then I'm not coming home. You cannot do her job. You have no experience. You and I started the business together, Naveen. I'm just as smart as you are. Then why must you speak such nonsense? See? He has no respect. Shouting isn't going to help. Okay. Then I will say it quietly. I'm not returning to India. Nor am I. Shanti has her freedom. I want the same. Don't lie. It's not freedom you want. It's him. Okay. Grishma. I'm sorry, but she is being very naive if she thinks that he will stand by her just because he took your virginity. What did you say? something about those pot plants in the atrium. Most of them are dying. Ah, tell Libby, not me. When she gets back from her hair appointment. I mean, tummy bug, headache, whatever excuse she used. Hey, what's that on your sleeve? Not blood, I hope. Oh, no, it's to my sauce. Damned spot won't come out. Oh, a bit shabby for an HOD, darling. I've had bigger things to worry about. Like Duncan King. Ah, he's in the bag. Not quite. He hasn't signed yet, and I'm worried that Chris is going to throw something in at the last minute to tempt him. Chris can't match the money we're offering. His budget won't stand for it. What about an extra sweetener, just to be sure? Oh. An advanced cardiovascular conference at the Cordor Institute, for example? Sweetheart, I can't justify spending... Did I just hear you say you can't? <laughs> Callum, you can do anything you want. Yes, I know, but... Thank you, darling. And who has put all these loose morals into her head? Don't you dare try and blame Shanti. She's married to a respectable man. I'm not blaming Shanti, I'm blaming you. Me? I'm not the one who's flirted brazenly in front of our children. Please, stop it, both of you. No one is to blame for Dipali's actions except Dipali and Kip. You, Kip, what are your intentions towards my daughter? Intentions? Do you intend to marry her? <laughs> marry her? You meant it. I'll take that as a no. Oh, my poor silly child. I want to go home, but I want to get on that plane and go home. So do I. Yeah, I think we should all go home. We have a family. And we need to be there for our daughters, especially now. Please come home. You are right. Our daughters are my duty. I will come home. Hey, Blondie, if you want something, come and ask me yourself. Tani. Well, what does that mean? If you want something, go and ask him. I know what it says, but what does it mean? Does he want to do the interview or not? Well, I asked him. And? He didn't say much except that he'd think about it. So I guess this means that he's decided to do it, or he just wants more visitors. Well, in that case, I'd better get out there and go and see him. Callum, could I get a moment alone with you? What's it about? Duncan King. Which means it concerns me. I've just finished a very protracted contract negotiation with Duncan, made all the more difficult by the large sums he was being offered by Justine's unit. He signed with you? Uh, only after I agreed to a protracted study leave. And of course I had to match the ludicrous money you somehow managed to procure for him. What did I tell you? Look... Callum, it's getting a bit ridiculous when we have two departments in the same hospital bidding against each other. Don't you agree? I have complete faith in my HODs. If Justine believes that a particular surgeon is vital for the smooth running of her team, who am I to argue? <laughs> so you're just going to keep dishing out huge amounts of cash whenever she asks for it? Well, the DHB is obviously dishing it out for you. You far exceeded your budget. Must be nice to be liked, Chris. Look, I, I'm just here to put a stop to the game playing. You know, we should start consulting each other over departmental staffing issues. 
So I pull back and then you step in and take my best scrub nurse before I have a chance to say anything. Or my anaesthetist or whoever. I don't think so, Chris. You just look after your new unit, all right? Mm, please, can we start our honeymoon again? Oh, I would love to sweep you away back to that big bed, the spa mm. bar, room service on tap. Why do we have to work? A little thing called survival. But at least we get time alone here now. We don't have all these people popping up. Uh, much as we love my family. Much as we love your family, it's lovelier to be on our own again. <laughs> Go away, whoever you are. Who is it? I couldn't do a champion. You're meant to be on a plane. Louie and I argued all the way to the airport. He still has no respect for me. I just can't take it anymore. So when they're looking at the duty free. I ran into a taxi. Have they gone without you? It was meant to be, Betty. It is God's will. It doesn't look like an expensive hairdo. I can't see any difference at all. That's because I didn't get as far as the shampoo chair before my mobile rang and kept ringing. Justine must have overheard us. She dogged me into Callum. You've only got yourself to blame. Well, what about this? Callum had a hissy at me for daring to argue with Justine when she wanted to give one of the nurses preferential treatment. Well, which nurse? Morgan. That sucks. What sucks is that she went running to Callum. Those two are out of control. Oh, come on. Callum's just finding his feet, that's all. Just because he made you employee of the month. Oh, what is that about? He's just trying to be teacher handing out gold stars to all the swats and geeks. I am not a swat, nor am I a geek. Have you heard Justine and Callum's new nicknames? No. Tell. Oh, that's mature. Name calling. Do you want to know or not? Go on. Have you heard what they're calling us? Who? The staff. The minions. They've given us nicknames. Would mine be beloved leader? <laughs> not quite. But here's a clue. Apparently, I'm Lady Macbeth. Oh, now who does that make me? <laughs> so what do you think they're trying to tell us, darling? That we're ruthless and power hungry? Do you care? Not particularly. Good. Here's to us. Long may we reign. <laughs> the story of Shannon Airport began in the 1930s at the beginning of Irish aviation and it's enjoyed many successes and challenges since then. Airfort and Octa Eglahur Tresha Shacht and Shacht Arati Valkahin.